Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button for more awesome content about Linux and open source software. Today, we're diving into a topic that often sparks a lot of debate in the Linux community, regular release versus rolling release distributions. So, um, let's break down what these terms mean, the pros and cons of each model, and help you figure out which one might be the best fit for you. All right, let's start with regular release distributions. A regular release Linux distribution follows a fixed schedule for releasing new versions of the operating system. Typically, you'll see a major version number, like Ubuntu 24.04 or Fedora 40, indicating significant changes such as a new kernel, desktop environment, or major features. Then, there are minor version numbers for smaller updates that fix bugs, improve security, or add minor enhancements. These distributions usually have a support cycle that dictates how long each version will receive updates and patches. For instance, Ubuntu releases a new major version every six months, with each version supported for nine months. But every two years, Ubuntu also releases a long-term support, LTS version, which gets five years of support. Fedora follows a similar six-month release cycle, with each version supported for 13 months. Some of the most popular regular release distros include Ubuntu, Fedora, Debian, Linux Mint, Elementary OS, and Zorin OS. Now, let's talk about rolling release distributions. A rolling release Linux distribution doesn't follow a fixed schedule for new versions. Instead, it continuously updates the system with the latest software packages and components as soon as they're available and tested. There are no major or minor version numbers, just a code name or a date indicating the current state of the system. Rolling release distros don't have a traditional support cycle because they are always up to date. However, they might have different branches or channels offering varying levels of stability. For example, Arch Linux has a stable branch that gets updates after thorough testing and a testing branch for updates before they are fully verified. Manjaro Linux, which is based on Arch, offers three branches, stable, testing, and unstable. Some of the popular rolling release distros include Arch Linux, Manjaro Linux, OpenSUSE Tumbleweed, Solus, Gen2 Linux, and Void Linux. So, Let's get into the pros and cons of regular release distributions. They offer a stable and consistent user experience because the system doesn't change drastically between updates. They are easier to install and use, usually featuring user-friendly installers and graphical interfaces for managing updates. They tend to be more compatible with third-party software and hardware, as they often use widely adopted standards and drivers. They are more suitable for production environments due to their thorough testing and fewer bugs and issues. However, they may become outdated, lagging behind the latest software and technology because they don't receive updates as frequently as rolling release distros. They might require a complete reinstall or a complex upgrade process when a new major version is released, which can be time-consuming and risky. They often have less customization and flexibility, usually featuring a predefined set of software and settings that are hard to change or remove. They may not always be compatible with the latest hardware, like newer laptops. Now, let's look at the pros and cons of rolling release distributions. They offer a cutting-edge and dynamic user experience, with the system always updated with the latest software and technology. They are more customizable and flexible, often featuring a minimal and modular design that lets users install and configure only the software and settings they want. They don't require a complete reinstall or a complex upgrade process, as the system is continuously upgraded with incremental updates. They are more suitable for enthusiasts and developers due to more features and options and being more responsive to feedback and suggestions. They tend to be compatible with the latest hardware. On the flip side, they may be unstable and unreliable, with the system changing frequently and unpredictably, possibly introducing bugs and issues affecting functionality and performance. They can be harder to install and use, often featuring command line based installers and manual approaches for managing updates, though this mostly applies to Arch rather than, say, Seuss's Tumbleweed. They might be incompatible with third party software and hardware, as they often use more experimental and proprietary standards and drivers. They can require more maintenance and troubleshooting due to potential conflicts and errors arising from constant updates. 